around this morning. We want to make sure that the quality's right. We've got new trainers coming through and there's a training program for those uh, to, uh, uh, trainers. My name's Mac McCormack. It's a, I own Safe Private and founder. At, uh, and uh, 30 years in the game, 17 years on Australian standards and all sorts of bits and pieces prior to, uh, uh, to that. I'm the designer of most equipment that uh, you'll see at, uh, uh, today and, and uh, we've been uh, designing, testing and certifying to Australian standards for over 30 years. Okay? So, happy days. Um, suspension trauma, guys, what is it? Anybody? Big straps in on, on femoral arteries, restrict flow, pulling blood in the legs. Got to get them down, basically. Basically, true. So, what's the problem with pulling blood in the legs? No circulation. So it doesn't go to the head. Yeah. As soon as we don't get oxygen to, to the head, you pass out, and then it, it can become fatal. That's a, so, which is a bad thing. So, it's a, uh, so suspension trauma. Have you seen suspension trauma before? No. no. And here we have a demonstration for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, sure lucky, uh, sure lucky, lucky day. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's a, so, uh, these belts. Um, what used to happen historically? 20 years ago, 25 years ago, at, uh, we made manufacture a, a, a belt which was called the safety belt. I'm just going to piss that off you for a moment. At, uh, and then what happens, we have these things called the engineers. And the engineers would put this onto a test dummy. There's a test dummy leaning up against that wall over there. They, they weigh 100 kilograms. <coughs> and so they have no arms and legs, to, which means they can't run away because the job they have is really shit. At, uh, at, uh, and uh, if you, human beings, you burst your spleen, burst your kidneys, at, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, burst your uh, your lungs. It's a, a bloody throbbing sputum, which brings tears to your eyes and takes your mind off sex, which should be avoided at all costs. Right? So, what used to happen is they put this on a test dummy and they drop it to ensure that the product wouldn't break. Does that make sense? And then they give it to someone like James and say, "Wear that." But if you wore it for what it was intended to to be used for, at uh, working at heights, at, uh, and you took a fall then it would basically break you in two. So hence their band, right? But what I want to do here with James is to, is to demonstrate to you what suspension trauma is. Can you just put that back on again for us, James? So, and this will demonstrate to you why belts are banned. Okay. But, uh, so James, just step over here. You know, I don't want you diving off things and Tarzan calls and all those sorts of things. Just turn around for me. Just keep that around your midriff, okay? And we'll have that there. You're going to love this, James. Yeah. Really cool. And we'll bring that down and we'll hook that in. Like that. Now, James, what I want you to do is I want you to put all your weight in that belt, just don't, don't do it just yet, is you're going to bend over as if you're touching your toes and bend your knees until all the weight is, is in the belt and just hang there, relax as if you're unconscious. Okay, just bend over, keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, and bend your knees. Take your legs out from underneath you and just totally relax and just let me know when that starts to feel uncomfortable. Right, I guess, yeah. <laughs> Guys, as simple as that is, that is suspension trauma. Okay? If you don't spread the weight around the body in such a way that it's comfortable on the end user, it, uh, um, you traumatise the body. Does that make sense? So when we say that the maximum shock load on the human body is to be six kilonewtons, where does that six kilonewtons come from? Was it sitting around a table, Australian standards, and 22 blokes just Plucking a, a, a number out of the out of the blue, or where do we come up with six kilonewtons? Mass multiplied by the acceleration of gravity. Very good. So we're, we're talking g-forces, right? What happens is that NASA uh, uh, testing certifying found that when you put asteroids into the thing and you spin them, that at six g's we start to get bruising on the body. Okay. So the standard's going right over. So therefore, at no time is the force uh, uh, between the pickup point on a harness, right? and the anchor point allowed to be greater than 6 Gs, 6 kilonewtons. Because that way, or we'll put a harness on in a moment, the weight is then spread around the body. Does that make sense? So no one point is at 6 G. The, the intent is no bruising. Also, our anchor point, what's an anchor point have to be strength-wise for a single person? 15, 15 kilonewtons. How do we get 15 kilonewtons? We don't know that's right because it means we, we justify existence today, right? That's a, so when you build a bridge or you do anything, there's always, we can take that off now, there's always, you've got a, working like this, you've got a shock absorber in the system. The shock absorber will only act, will only deploy if you generate a shock load. They're like an airbag in your car. So if you don't have an accident, they don't deploy. If you have an accident, they do deploy. But if they do deploy, it's because you've generated a force greater than 420 kgs. 
which is the equivalent of five people hanging off that lanyard. Does that make sense? But if you do have a fall, it doesn't mean that you walk around for the rest of your life weighing 420 kgs. Does that make sense? And so on that basis, as soon as the peak force, hold that for us, as soon as the peak force has been used up, you go back to your normal suspended weight. Yeah? So if you weigh in at 100 kilograms or 80 kilograms or 110 kilograms, whatever it is, it's 110 kilograms because that dynamic shock loading has been dissipated. Clear as mud? Okay. Now this is the old system and this has been in place for probably the last 15 years and we're now looking to remove it from the Australian standards. We're making recommendations to remove it. The reason being is because new technology has come out. You need, when you're cal calculating ground clearance, it's a, you need uh, 1.7 metres it's a, with a, a, a shock absorber, it's a, with these systems, which means with, with, with the, the lanyard 2 metres and 1.7 metres, you're talking 3.7 metres. So if you're one storey off the ground and you fall, you're going to strike the ground. Does that make sense? So we don't want that. We don't want, we don't want people to fall in the first place. This bike here, see, see here, I've got a two metre lanyard attached to a shock absorber. We've taken the uh, um, heat shrink off the, off the shock absorber so you can see it. Does that make sense? And we're going to drop the 100 kilogram uh, mass uh, to two metres uh, and, uh, and you'll see, what I want you to do is watch how quickly this, this dummy disappears from here and reappears down the bottom. We also want you to watch the shock absorber to see how the shock absorber reacts. At a, at a, and what you'll also see is when the dummy bottoms out at the bottom, there's not a whiplash. Okay? At a, you know, if there was no shock absorber in there, it'd be like a rubber band. You, you, you'd pull it back, let it go, that stored energy, and would want to fire forward. In this case, what happens is the energy is used up and the dummy will stay at, 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 the, uh, at, the, at the bottom. What we've got here is a tagline. We use taglines for rescue recovery. It's a, so if we're working on an oil rig and we've got the ocean below us, it means we can't get an EWP in after a rescue to conduct the rescue, after a fall to conduct the rescue. Does that make sense? So what we use is a tagline and we've got a portable winch system to be able to uh, recover the person back up to the work deck. Yeah? So this unit is going to fly through here. So don't put your hands anywhere near, near, uh, near this. And this dummy is going to disappear from here it's a, a down the bottom. So what you're seeing is, as per Australian standards, 891.4, which is selection, use and maintenance, okay? 891.1 covers us, the manufacturer, <coughs> what we need to do to ensure this harness complies with Australian standards. But that's a test, a strength test for the harness, and then for the, the, uh, the lanyards, it's a, a performance test to make sure that force doesn't go above six kilonewtons. So when you put the two together, you have a harness which won't fail and a lanyard which won't allow a force greater than six kilonewtons. Have I lost anybody so far? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to drop this, tech, this unit and you'll, you'll see what fall arrest means. So fall, you're going to fall, and then arrest, we're going to arrest the fall, okay? Then we'll do a rescue recovery, we'll set up on a different system in restraint technique and we'll do the same thing again. Does that make Here we sense? go, testing! So guys, the shock load in that was about 4.2 kilonewtons, right? Would anybody here recommend this as a work method in your workplace? <laughs> if you struck the steel work on the way down, you would, could be impaled, uh, seriously injured or, or dead. But this is the Australian standards. Please remember that the Australian standards is designed to set the minimum benchmark of what's deemed safe in Australia, right? And this was the case since, what's the, uh, what year did we come up with 89 to 1.1? 1997? Something like that. Yeah, so, something along those lines. So the technology has moved, moved past, right? It's a, and so that's fall arrest. And that's why fall arrest is in the bottom of the hierarchy of control. Just hang on, Murray. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's on the bottom of the hierarchy of control. You look at the hierarchy of control, it's right down the bottom because who would want to do that? Yeah? Certainly not me. It's a, and guys, we've got a live anyway, aren't you? Sorry, what? We've got a live down in there anyway, aren't you? Well, you see, you, you, back, back in the day, we went, that's great because the lanyard didn't snap, the person didn't hit the ground, so, and we've dissipated the fall, you know, it's a, the, the shock load. But now we're going, why would you want to do it in the first place, right? It's a craziness. Now, what we've done is we've engaged the tagline. So this is a portable winch, 
It's a, if you're doing confined space or whatever, and you're using the old winches, which is hand over hand over hand, will demonstrate the new electric winches to, uh, uh, to you. And this is a tag line, and that's a 100 kilogram mass coming up. So as that's coming up, to demonstrate this is a type one device. It moves up and down the rope. No, it's too many moving parts. I'll wait until our test dummy has come back up again. Now, did I mention to you before why our test dummy has no arms and no legs? Because I'm sure if that was your job, you'd do a runner. Now, guys, can I also point out while we're going through this, with this test dummy, we can generate any form of shock load that we want. Does that make sense? Simply by allowing the dummy to fall further. Yeah? So people get confused between Australian standards testing and the weight we use for testing and the uh, recommended use for end users, right? They're, they're not connected. Just because we use a 100 kilogram test mass doesn't mean that you as an end user, if you weigh more than 100 kilograms, that that's a drama for you. It's, a, it's not. What we're doing is we're generating a shock load on the harness when we do the testing um, uh, of a, of a 1.7 tonne. None of you guys weigh 1.7 tonne, right? It's a, so anyway. So what we're going to do now is this is a Type 1 device and it's designed to move up and down at, uh, um, as you work vertically. So if you're on the scaffolding, uh, you're attached to this unit, you move up and down. If you fall, it cam locks over. Now, so what we want to do is work in restraint technique because it is at the top of the hierarchy of control for harness-based work. Yeah, for harness-based work. What we've got in here is a double system. So here we've got both a shock absorber it's a, and we've got a rescue recovery system. It's a, and so it's a, what we'll demonstrate here is, you see we've got slack in the system so the, the, the rope can pull through. See how the rope pulls through, like that? Here's our shock absorber. Can I have the tape measure please, Murray? That's a, beautiful, thank you. And we've got a distance here of Almost seven. Just we'll call it seven. Seventy centimeters. Yeah. Happy days. Thank, oh, I'll tell you what, Murray. I'll just put that right there. Happy days. Okay. So this is called restraint technique. Now, restraint technique would be we pull that up like that, and there's no slack in the system, and it's already locked. This is limited freefall when it's like this because the unit there's there's no load on the unit, and it's just moving uh, freely. Okay. So we would recommend to you that wherever you can, as you're moving up, you move up and go into a restraint technique, yeah? Because we don't want you to fall. But for the benefit of the demonstration, we'll go to limited freefall, so the rope can move freely through the, through the unit. And here's our shock, there's a shock absorber built into this, and there's a shock absorber built into to this unit here. Okay, and we're ready when you're ready, Murray. Testing! So guys, between the two work methods, which one would you recommend? The first one or the second one? Yeah? So guys, yeah, I used to be um, um, SAS and hey ho and hey low, high altitude high opening and high altitude low opening, whatever. And I know getting out of the back of an aeroplane, it's a, the first thousand feet will take me 10 seconds. After that, I've reached terminal velocity. And at terminal velocity, hang on Murray, don't do it just yet. And at terminal velocity, it'll take me five seconds for every thousand feet after that, right? Now, you guys won't be working that high, but the thing is, gravity sucks. And gravity's always watching you. It doesn't matter what you write on your risk assessments. As soon as you try to cheat gravity, it's there and it's waiting for you, right? So, the less you fall, the less shock load that you generate, yeah? Now, we would have generated, and we can show you the testing, about 4.2 uh, uh, um, in that test. So now, here's our worker, he's suspended, he's fallen, oh, sorry, he's fallen, let's see how far he's gone in total, reaction, distance. So we're at eight point, we'll call it nine. So he's gone a total distance of that, yeah? Versus 5.7 metres, yeah? Which one would you recommend to your kids? Yeah. Shock load's the same, it's a uh, um, uh, happy day. So now, thanks Murray, now this guy is getting paid to do a job and he's not doing the job while he's hanging around his harness, right? So we need to rescue and recover. 
Now, if you've got a rescue system where a third, you have to call a fire brigade, the fire brigade has to come in and they have to do all this sort of stuff and blow away the hair or whatever it is, right? It's a, it all takes time, right? But built into this system is the rescue recovery. So what we have here, and I'll, and I'll show you uh, uh, over the side, see how the activation handle tucks out the way so that you can't accidentally uh, to, uh, activate it. So when I want to activate it, all I do is pull it over to one side like this, and now I can lower the person to the ground. So this is at the anchor point, yeah, that's a, and, and this system is a type one device rope grab. The difference is no suspension trauma. Do you remember we are talking before about suspension trauma? You hang in your harness for 30 minutes, it can stop blood flow, cause you to go unconscious, and could be fatal, right? Does that sound like a safety harness to you guys? No, doesn't sound safe to me. So what we want to do is stop the fall. If you do fall, limit the fall, how far you fall, limit the shock load, and then be able to rescue and recover without a third person going to your assistant. No worries? And this allows us to do that. And, and if I go too far, it locks like that. Hang on. It locks. And if I let it go, it locks. I'll demonstrate that over here. So I can do that, good morning. Oh, yeah, that's the whole idea. If you've got this at the anchor point, or from the ground, through a pulley, and back down again, no one has to risk the, uh, going up and, and, and rescue. It's just a bit of uh, pre-organisation and away you go. These, these are the old lanyards for starters. This is what we're recommending to remove from the Australian standards. The reason being that if I fall, I have to fall this far before that shock absorber will do anything for me at all. Bzzz, bugger that. You know, to, this one has an adjuster so we can adjust the slack out of the system. But if I get it wrong and I have slack like this, I have to have a shock absorber in the system, otherwise this will cut through the rope and I'll continue into free fall. Does that make sense? Yep. But this unit will pull out up to 1.7 metres of additional fall. Who wants that? Yep. This is the new technology. It's uh, coming through very simple, very easy to use. So to attach. I clip in like this, right? Jane, just move back for me. Don't touch it, don't touch it, move back. Lean against it. Anything happen? Really push it down. Nothing happens. 4.2 kilonewtons before it starts to move, okay? Now, James, I want you to move in towards, in, take this rope in your hand, and as you move forward, push the tail of the rope away from it. Is that easy? Stop, James, lean backwards. Just let it go, just let it go. Restraint landing, okay? Very easy to remove the slack from the system. Happy days. Now, when James, let's say James goes, I want to go to this point here, right, and work. There's a trigger on the side. See the silver trigger here? So all James does, I'll demonstrate the start of James, is pull the trigger and he can walk backwards. As soon as he lets it go, it stops. You do that, James. Just walk backwards. Let it go, let it go, let it go. Stops. Now, grab the tail, pull it out as you walk forward. Stop. Lean back. Just from there, stop, okay. easy, right? Now watch what happens, so James, come over this way for us. Love it, let it go, just lean back. James, James has now taken a, a, a fall, okay? And James needs to, he's conscious, and he needs to rescue recover. So all he does is, just put that in one hand, James, activate the lever, see so, so the lever, nothing going on. So. Now, with this, just, just lighten on this, this hand here, bring that over, and pull it down gently, and, and it'll start moving back. Let it go, let it go, and it locks. Now, pull it all the way over, James, ready? Go too far, it locks. Let it go, it locks. There's just a sweet spot in the middle, so you can adjust up and down. Really simple. What we're recommending with these guys is, is to have a dual lanyard, one of these on both ends. What it means is, if, if James falls and he's conscious, he can rescue himself or, or rapid response. If he's unconscious, it means the other end can be activated without somebody going over the edge to, to do rescue recovery. Does that make sense? If you're working on a tower, then you have the other end at the ground level and just have it running up through a pulley and down the other side. If you're climbing the tower, you just put your type one device on the other side and it's hands free as you go. Really, really simple, easy to use. No drums? In the um, loaded mode, the trigger is not functional then? No. So if I go like that, I'm, I'm trying to lift my whole body weight with, yeah. with the finger. Yeah. And, and it's like driving a car. 
would you drive a car down the wrong end of the, of the freeway? It's a, no, and if you would, it's a, you're, a, you're a, uh, unsafe. <laughs> That's right. So you'll go through this today, guys. So like anything, it's, a, it, it's up to you what you choose to use when you're working in heights. From our perspective, it's a, as a training organisation, we're demonstrating to you the different uh, equipment that's there, both the old equipment and the new equipment. What you choose at the end of the day is entirely up to you. What we recommend is we don't want people to fall in the first place, so we want restraint technique. It's a, this equipment, if you use it incorrectly and you have slack in the system, like that, and you fall, the unit automatically shock loads and, and takes it out. I remember when credit cards came out, it's a, and everyone used to have bank books, and, and people go, oh, I, I, you know, they're trying to give away credit cards. People go, oh, no, 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 I'm familiar with bank books. Certainly we were there when we outlawed belts and moved into full body harness, and the uproar from blokes, oh, you've got to change things and blah, blah, blah. Could you imagine trying to change people back from full body harnesses to belts now? No way in the world. So, from credit cards to bank books? <laughs> yeah, or from credit cards to bank books. So as a new technology comes through, we'll, make, we'll demonstrate it on our courses. It's a, it'll run you through it. It's a, the whole aim is you're not here because we want you to fall. We want you to be safe. If there's you, risk of a fall, harness up. Work in restraint wherever you can. If you do fall, be able to rescue and recover so that suspension trauma doesn't affect you. If you take a fall, you want to go the least amount of distance as possible because you don't want to strike the steel work or, or anything on the way down. Next. Yeah. Yeah. James. <laughs> um, guys, if, if, if I get James to attach to this, hang on one minute. If I give this to James and there's not an extension strap and I go hook onto this and James leans over and he hooks on, James, what do you reckon you hooked on? I reckon you hooked it on. You reckon, well, you reckon I'm right? <laughs> so if you don't know whether you're hooked or you're not hooked, okay? So with an extension strap, it means that you can see what you hook onto and you, and you know you're secure, yeah? Now I'm gonna take this extension strap out for a moment, I'm gonna go straight to the rear D, and there's nothing wrong with that as long as it's on. But the thing is that James doesn't know, he can't see, right? So what I want you to do here, James, is just stand up on, on this, there we go, stand up. I'm just gonna lock this off for a second. Okay, and now just bend your knees and, and, and come down so you suspend it in the heart. Feet off the thing up, okay. Who do you know that works in industry, that works in any, anywhere where they attach to the rear D, other than construction? Have you ever seen a mountaineer or a tree lopper or a rope access always in the front? Why? Well, it's obvious. James, without standing uh, 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 up, wants you to get down from there. The reality is you can't. And if you're using something like this, you can't because you can't activate it. And this is where the suspension trauma issue comes in. Yeah? So, and, and inertia reels are great because they you go, inertia reels are great because they automatically remove the slack from the system. Right? So what we recommend now is you use one of these and attach to your nurse reel from the front wherever you can, guys. It's a, because uh, if you fall and this unit locks off, it means you can rescue and cover yourself and you're not relying on somebody else. Yeah? That's it. No jumps. All good. Thank you very much for demonstrating today.